The way you're applying your makeup might be pulling your face down. Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I wanted to teach you how to give yourself a natural little facelift or a little boost when it comes to your makeup and how you apply your normal products. I wanna preface by saying there's certainly nothing wrong with this side, and if you like a more downturned eye or anything like that, absolutely go right ahead. But I wanted to start today's video by doing a recreation of one of my short little TikTok videos and go a little bit more in depth because it's very hard to get a lot of information into like less than a minute. This tutorial is really just inspired by the way that I used to do my makeup versus how how I do it now, knowing a little bit more about my face shape and knowing how I like the look of a more lifted and snatched effect. These are the exact same products on both sides, just applied in a different way. As you can see on this eye, I applied the eyeliner the whole way around the eyes, lots of heavy shadow under the eyes, blush and bronzer on the apples of the cheeks, and I applied my brow pencil a little bit lower versus this side, which we'll get into right now. All right, so let's begin. I already have my foundation on. I mixed the L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Foundations, the shades N2 and N3. So I just put that on with a sponge. If anyone's curious, I primed with this MAC Hyper Real Skin Cam is balm. It's quite lovely, very glowy, but you can use literally any moisturizer that you like. It doesn't really matter. Don't use primer. It doesn't work for me most of the time, but if it works for you, fantastic. But now let's get into the first step of your routine and the first technique to lift in the face, which is highlighting, aka concealing. You can use a lighter foundation shade though if you have it. I'm just going to use concealer because it's a little bit easier and for demonstration purposes. I'm going to use the Anastasia Magic Touch Concealer today. I feel like this one is very underrated. It's got a fat wand, great coverage. All right, so I I like to highlight first right under the eye, but in the, under the front of the eye, like here. And I actually like to line it up kind of along the side of the nose. And you don't have to take it all the way up to the edge because we're gonna blend that there within a second with a sponge. And then I also like to highlight a little bit on the outer corner of the eye. It actually covers up a little natural discoloration I have. And as you can see, it's gonna immediately kind of lift up and pull the eye up. I also like to take a little bit starting right above the lip and kind of connect it up here just because I do have some discoloration, but also I like to kind of highlight in an L shape. I find that works for my face shape. Obviously play around with it, see what works for your face shape. I have, feel like I have a, you know, I have a rounder, fuller cheek, so I like to do this L because it gives me a little bit more angles. And if you like, I also like to take a little bit right on the jaw. I don't recommend doing like the highlight line that's really harsh to the corner of the mouth because what is the point of that? Because you gotta blend it back in anyway. So I just highlight right here. It's kind of like reverse contouring technique because when you apply dark here, dark here, and then light here, it just kind of blends it together, makes it look a little bit more believable. Do a touch on the nose and a little tiny bit in the center of the forehead, just to make sure that we have balance over the face. I say balance a lot, and I mean that because if you're putting like a highlighter shade under your eye, even down around your jaw or chin, and then you don't put any on the highlight or the nose, I feel like it starts to look inconsistent. You know what I mean? Like if you're gonna highlight one spot, you gotta highlight all of it because then it's gonna look overall more natural, more believable to get my drift. But now I do like to blend everything in as soon as I apply it. You can wait till the end after you've applied your contour and blush, but I prefer to just blend it in as I go. Typically most cream products are gonna be a little bit easier to blend and apply while they're still fresh. So I'm just taking a beauty sponge and it is damp, same one I use for my foundation. And I'm just tapping this out under my eyes. Don't dry or pull because you do want to keep it roughly where we put it down but as you can see that amount of concealer is more than enough to cover up this whole under eye area and I should tap right in like this really no effort needed here I'm using very very light pressure blend this out as well all right, so here's our concealer all blended in. As you can see, just this step alone, you're already gonna notice a nice lift, especially from the eye area highlight. I wanna clarify too, I do recommend highlighting with a cream or liquid product, but the next bronzer and blush step, you can do with just powder, you can do with just cream, you can do with both, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna use cream though, just to better show where my placement is and what I'm doing today. All right, next, shading and defining the face. I'm gonna use a cream contour, but it kinda leans warm, so you can use a cream bronzer if you want. Really whatever you prefer, just your, your defining shade. And I'm gonna take a synthetic brush about this shape and size. It has a little bit of an angle, not an angle, but um, a flatness to it. Gives you a little bit more precision. Just pick up some of the contour. You can always double check it on the back of your hand, see how much product you have on. And all right, let's start on the cheek. So I like to apply mine actually right above the hollow of the cheekbone. I do this because it just kind of gives a natural lift and will definitely pull your face upwards. Lightly tapping out the edges with the brush, but I'm not blending it in fully. I like to blend in lastly with the sponge. Now to lift the eyes, I like to start at the outer corner of the eye right about here, and then apply the cream bronzer up and around to the temple. As you can see, just kind of snatches the face up. Mm, delicious. Once again, just starting at the corner of the eye and then blending it up and around to the temple. Be sure to tap more than drag because the dragging is what's gonna lift up 
your foundation underneath. It might start to look a little bit patchy. I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually a little bit of pilling just for me dragging that one motion. And that is your moisturizer, your primer, your foundation being pulled up by the brush. So that's why tapping is so important. I take a little bit around the edge of the forehead. Now you don't have to, depending on the size of your forehead. I have some decent real estate and I'm blonde, so I like to take it up there a little bit. I do a touch under the nose and a little bit on the sides, but nothing too crazy. This part is kind of custom to whatever you like to do with your nose. And then I do like to take a little bit right under the front of the jawline, right about here. I feel like this helps you just lift up and snatch the jaw without going too crazy or going too noticeable with the contour. This is pretty much it. This is the simple placement, but as you can see, it's pretty high. It's already lifting. It's definitely pulling the eyes up. And I like to use that brush because it gives a soft blend. So we're not blending in like harsh straight lines, like straight from a stick. But now I'm gonna take the sponge, same sponge as before and start to tap in the bronzer. Once again, you're pressing up and down and kind of blending in an upward motion. You know, don't start blending it down here. Don't drag it, just kind of tap it and blend it up. I also like to kind of go back and forth between between blending out each side. And I do that because obviously the sponge is going to start absorbing the bronzer. The more bronzer it absorbs, the less it's going to blend it away. Does that make sense? Like it's gonna start picking up a lot of bronzer on this side and now it's covered in bronzer. So then if you go on this side, it's gonna be more bronzy on this side. So that's why I go back and forth to help make sure that the face is as symmetrical and even as possible. And make sure to tap into your hairline, especially if you are pale like me. Her. Now this is the only part of the contour that I kind of blend down because you don't really want to blend the dark all the way up here. You do want to blend that kind of down into the natural shadows of your face. And again, I kind of do the nose, not because I really want to contour it, but because again, balance, like we are doing bronzer slash contour all around the perimeter of the face. And then if you don't put any on your nose, I feel like it just looks unrealistic. So that's why I do a little bit there just to make sure the face looks even and balanced. I do end up often making my face a little bit too bronzy. And if that's the case, I just take whatever is left on my brush and do a little bit of cream bronzer on the contours of the neck. And I feel like that helps make everything match a little bit better. And so here's the contour all blended in. Last step for the complexion is gonna be blush. I'm gonna use this Rem Beauty Blush in Audition. And I like to place my blush actually on the very high points of the cheeks basically where you put your highlighter. I like to take it all the way up and around to basically the tail of the brow like this. You can do like the old fashioned application, but that's what's gonna kind of bring your face down and make your cheeks look a little bit rounder. I like to look a little bit more angular, a little bit more lifted and sculpted. So that's why I put the blush up so high. I'm just gonna do the same thing on this side, again, on the high point of the cheek. And once again, with the sponge, just tapping this in very carefully. I set your cheeks on fire. You just wanna add some rosiness. And I do like to tap it into the bronzer. I feel like it gives a very seamless and pretty blend. My brows are kind of disappearing, but that's why you can do your brows later. See, we blend it carefully so you can still see the highlight points. You can still see the contours and now, of course, the blush. Now let's get into the eyes. I'm going to add a touch of powder on the under eyes, not too much, but just a little bit so we don't have any fallout issues and I don't want to be too, too shiny. I'm going to take some of the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder, shade 10. And if I have a puff, do I have a powder puff? All right, taking some of the loose powder, really pushing it into the poof, and just tapping this on the under eyes to set it. Gorgeous, blurred, no pores, just smooth like a baby. There we go. I wish I could leave the makeup all dewy and glowy forever. It is prettier that way, in my opinion. It looks more skin-like the less powder you use, but then of course it will go off, it will get oily, and it will slide around. And we can't have that, so. Here it is all set, but you know what? The creams are still coming through. I'm gonna take a neutral palette. It doesn't really matter what you use. This one is from Artist Couture, the Supreme Nudes. And I'm gonna start as I do all of my tutorials with a little round fluffy brush, something like this. It's a little bit of a tapered end, so you get a little bit of precision. It's not massive, but it's not super small either. And I'm gonna start with this little guy right here. You could use either one of these, but as you can see, it's like a nice neutral brown. It's not too orangey, not too cool. You can really use any colors you like. I'm just gonna do it in a neutral um, color scheme, but if you wanna do it in color, you absolutely can. And I'm just gonna start to apply this into the outer half of the crease. I just kinda like to tap it in there to deposit some of the color. So kinda like this, I'm leaving the inner half of the eye blank because I wanna put a highlight shade there in a little bit and basically kind of follow where we put the bronzer slash contour earlier. You wanna use a shade that's light enough that it will kind of disappear into your skin like this. If you're having a lot of trouble with it blending out, it might be a little bit too dark or you just might have too much shadow on your brush. Touch more right on the outer corner of the crease just to give it 
a little bit more definition. That's basically all you gotta do. All right, next to brighten the eyes, I'm gonna take a flat packing brush, kind of like this. You can use really any shape. And I'm gonna go in with this light nude cream. You can even use a foundation powder. So I'm gonna use a light foundation powder. This one's for Makeup Forever, but in a very light shade. I'm just gonna tap this right over the inner half of the eye that we left blank, just to set it in place, but keep it nice and bright. And then I'm also gonna tap a little bit of this right on the under outer corner of the eye. And I'm gonna use this to basically reverse contour the eye, kind of like how we highlighted the jaw earlier. I'm putting a little highlight right under the eye. And you see, just by doing that, it's like already creating a nice little wing for us. Just like that, you're already seeing a nice lift and you got a nice guide for your eye makeup. I'm gonna take my favorite little brush in the world, a detail brush. It's just a short little guy, kind of stubby, but got some softness to it, that's what you want. I use this as my liner brush. Now you can use a liquid liner if you're very confident. You can use an angle brush and a gel potted liner if you like. I like to do my liner with shadow. So I'm gonna take the darkest brown matte shade right here, really coat the brush, tap off that excess. I'm gonna create a little baby wing. So I'm just gonna stamp this right above the highlight shade we put down and lightly drag it up and out. Using the flat front side of the detail brush like that, and boom, we got a nice clean wing. Because it's shadow, it gives you a little bit more control, a little bit more flexibility. If you mess up, you can just take a little more foundation powder. You can blend it away with your sponge, whatever you like. But now I'm gonna take the brush kind of from the side, not so much this way, but more from the side. And I'm gonna begin to just tap this right along the eye, connecting it to the lash line. Basically gonna start using the tip of the brush now and just take it right about halfway into the eye. I don't wanna take it the whole way in because I have smaller eyes. That's gonna minimize your eyes a little bit. The point is again to lift. So we're really only focusing on the outer half of the eye. And you can build up this color as much or as little as you like. Really doesn't matter as long as you have that liner just on the outer half of your eye. I'm gonna add a tiny touch under the outer half of our lower lash line just for a little bit of balance with the eyes. Now, if you're comfortable doing it and want a little extra lift, I'm gonna take the brush now, same matte shadow, and we're gonna do the inner corner. I'm just gonna start by stamping this straight down and doing a little line just like that. I used to do the inner corners going inward like this, and that can work depending on your eye shape, especially if you want your eyes to look a little closer together. But my eyes are already close enough. So by going straight down with the inner corner, it's actually gonna make the end of your eye look like it's going more upward. So it is gonna contribute to the lift, even though you're technically going down. I'm gonna take a tiny little bit more and just connect it to the lower lash line. You can leave it like this in all brown if you like. I'm gonna add a tiny touch of matte black though, just for a little bit of extra definition. I'm just gonna tap this right along the lash line, so not everywhere we put the brown, but just even closer to the eye and not quite so far out into the wing. And using black also just makes the lashes look really full, especially if you're gonna be wearing falsies in a little bit, which I want to do. And that's pretty much the shadow. You can add some shimmer on the lid if you like, or you can leave it matte, but this is the key placement to getting a more lifted and pulled up eye. Gonna go ahead and give my lashes a curl, which doesn't really matter because I'm going to wear false lashes. But if you're not gonna wear lashes, do give your lashes a nice little curl. And I'm gonna take the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara and just brush this through. All right, there we go. You can absolutely stop here, but if you want that little extra drama, that little zhuzh, to your eyes. I'm gonna take a half lash. It does not matter what you use. You can use like an Ardell Wispy and cut it in half. You can use a kiss, whatever you like. Um, I don't even know what this lash is technically anymore. I just have these little trays <laughs> that I pull from. All right, here's the lash I'm gonna use. As you can see, it has some nice density to it. It's long, not too, too long, because we want it to blend into the rest of our eye without standing out too much. Just painting on a tiny little strip of lash glue. If you're not comfortable with lashes, I really do recommend starting with a half lash. They are so much easier to use, they're easier to put on, and they just feel a lot more comfortable as well. So definitely start with the half and just work your way up. All right, now I'm just gonna take the lash, and you guessed it, we're gonna put it on the outer half of the eye. Basically, we wanna follow our liner just right about there. I always like to take the lash applicators and kind of pinch it together with my natural lashes. I find that really helps me to get it nice and close to the lash line and make our lashes blend in better with the fake ones. Oh, but the way that that will just snatch your eyes up. Sometimes I do like to take a little bit of extra mascara and do a second coat on the inner lashes because as you can see, that's immediately gonna make it look a lot thicker and then kind of help it blend in better with the fake lash. Ooh, I almost forgot a step you can do if you wanna make your eyes look a little bit bigger. Something that I'm obsessed with 
is using a light nude liner in the waterline. Definitely not revolutionary by any means, but I love this one because it's so creamy and easy to use. It's from Estee Lauder. If you're curious, it's their Smoke and Brighton Kajal duos. Just take this, pull the eye down ever so slightly and just run this back and forth. And it goes on so easy, like I'm barely using any pressure. And there you go, you got a nice bright waterline. I'm actually gonna add a touch of powder, bronzer, and blush. And for anyone wondering, using the House Labs bronzers and blushes, this one's hibiscus. And just tapping a little bit of this on the high point of the cheek. You can use powder to begin with, or you can do both like I am right now. And here is the lifted makeup. As you can see, I mean, the difference is pretty significant and it's all pretty neutral colors. Nothing out of the ordinary in terms of your products, but this placement on the eyes and the cheeks really does make quite a difference. I mean, here we already have the face lifted, of course, but the eyes versus nothing, I mean, come on. And again, this is just preference. You certainly don't have to do such a lifted, pulled up type of makeup look. A downturned eye can be absolutely beautiful. This is just the way that I like to do my makeup because I like to give that little extra angles and a little extra lift. And I'd love to do this on mature clients or anyone just looking to get a little bit more snatched, if you will. Snatched. Snatched. I don't think I'm even gonna use this for the thumbnail, but snatched. <clears throat> but please let me know if you have any questions. If you'd like to me elaborate on anything, happy to do a base routine or more in-depth eye routine, whatever you guys like to see. Anyway, I will see you on the next one. Goodbye.